Listeners, readers, enjoyers, I'd like to welcome you onto a path, a path that leads into a glorious future, one full of possibilities, one full of hope, a road from 500, which is actually not a road towards anything, it's a road away. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined as always by Gary. Hi. Hey, Gary. Hey. Nothing special about this episode. Is there or not? is it? Or is it's it? It's the, road, it's the road from 500 part road three. Road from 500 week one. <laughs> Welcome. Gary, do you miss the items? Uh, No. <laughs> I, I feel like the items uh, are the weird one part of the episode where you have to be like, oh, yeah, uh, you get this in an item room and then it looks like this. And then we just kind of go back, you know? Yeah, smart. Uh, not even smart Gary and Will. Just, uh, I guess, diligent Gary and Will. Reading Gary and Will. Ugh, reading. Ugh. Is it, it's called a role-playing game, not a reading-playing game. God, Gary, can you remember, remember the last time you read a book you weren't being forced to read at gunpoint? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I read So You Want to Talk About Race? And I'm looking at a, a uh, Tom the Optimist on the Slack sent me a copy of the Shadowrun novel Burning Bright, which deals with the Bug City Chicago stuff. Yeah, which, do you think will, which of those do you think will be more important for American society? Mm, well, I haven't read the second one yet. It's true. And Bug City's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, I have to read that because, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want uh, Chicago to be taken over by gigantic insect spirits. I, I have to ask, why does the president let Ares Mega Technology do that kind of thing? Well, the corporations have as much power as the, uh, com- you know, have more power than the government in the future. <laughs> oh, Gary, no choice. stumbled upon satire. Satire. Commentary from Mr. John Fassa, founder of Shadowrun. Mm-hmm. And... Uncle's on <laughs> his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Never talk to me or my Dunkles on again. I'm oh, sorry. I need my firstborn Dunkles on. <laughs> Gary, you can make See, that happen in your life. I can't actually. <laughs> oh, you I, can ha- I have my balls taken away. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> adopt an 11 year old child and tell her her name is now Dunkles, <laughs> Dunkles on. on now. Why well, stop at 11? I I feel like. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's kind of shitty to what? rename an adopted what? child. What? what stop at 11 is a complicated <laughs> phrase. Um, doesn't it feel like if you adopt a child, you shouldn't be able to name it? I, uh, I think after the, I think up to like age two, you can probably like, yeah, there's definitely a cutoff. I think like I picked 11 because it was an absurd age at which to rename a child. Yeah. Yeah, like getting used to a new name at 11 would be difficult for me, at least. That was around when I tried to go by Ryan for a while. Yeah. Parents got divorced, you know, kids act out. Yeah, identity thing. Get a new haircut, take on a new name, new fashion. Grow, grow a rat tail, get fat. Yeah, as a fashion choice. Yep, I got that's fat. I got yeah, fat. I like, that's what I, how I like to phrase it. I got, yeah. I got fat and wore big dog t-shirts as a, as a fashion choice. You know, uh, speaking of fat fashion choices... Uh, I had a, uh, a memory I haven't thought about in a while pop up mm-hmm. and, uh, I don't think I've ever talked about this on a show. And since we are on the road from 500, we sure are Gary, my, uh, so I poor kid growing up uh-huh. and, uh, had a bunch of old shitty clothes. It was a cor- uh, source of constant misery and teasing. Um, and my grandparents at one point were like, Hey, the new school year is coming out. We're going to take you to buy some clothes. And I, this has never happened to me. Sure. Uh, before like I, uh, and this was when I was like 16 or 17. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, previous to this, the way I would get clothes is my mom would just buy it, uh, based on what was like affordable. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while I would like pick out a shirt or look at something and get like a t-shirt that I wanted for, uh, like a birthday or something. Yeah. So my, letting, like letting you know what kind of big dogs you were affiliated with. Yes. Uh, famously a Beavis and Butthead shirt that I ripped the sleeves off of to be cool. Um, so I was at this, uh, this clothing, like a JC Penny or something with my grandpa. Did you have a, I, 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 Gary, I want to hear the entire story. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have hairy upper arms? No. See, I got, I got, I got a real thick thatch of fur right there on Hmm. the upper arm. Really unattractive. Uh, me be the judge of that. I mean, I am the judge of that. I don't, I don't care for it. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, 
No, no, the, my, my upper arms are pretty bare. They're actually like unusually hairless. It's not great. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to get like a new fashion style. And the idea was cargo shorts and Hawaiian shirts. And uh, 17 or 16 year old Gary was a big enough dork that I uh, called one of my friends to tell them I was going to like meet at the coffee shop we went to all the time and told them to like get ready because I was going to make like a fashion splash of some kind. Like I was like, you know, I got a whole new style <laughs> and then rolled all up into the the restaurant with my cargo shorts and Hawaiian shirt, uh, my new one. And all my friends were disappointed and thought, I don't know what they thought. You know, I was going to show up in a suit or something, but yeah, that was me being a real big ass dork. I wish there was a sound that the human body could make that recreates the feeling of when I, in the middle of that, when that story got to the good part <laughs> of me gently resting my chin on my fist <laughs> and just literally staring at the computer monitor where your face should be mm -hmm. and just taking it in. Just amazing stuff, man. Like, I was just like, hey, guys, listen, I'm, <laughs> I'll be there in a little bit. And I got an announcement. Uh, and yeah. Cargo so, shorts. Cargo shorts, Hawaiian shirt. That was my combo for who, my who later. Were you, who were you channeling there? Who, like, what, what, what picture in what magazine did you see that, like, triggered this? So, so none of that. I've never, uh, I don't know what I was thinking other than, like, looking at this stuff i wasn't trying to i wasn't trying to channel anybody i, I know I you just, weren't trying to channel anybody but this came from oh, somewhere this was lodged I, in your brain by like some fucking x-men comic or something you saw mm. wolverine on vacation <laughs> and thought hey pretty snazzy the, the, the he looks here. like weird al if he was hanging out with sublime yeah it looks like weird al and weird uh oh but what uh, if the torso was much wider it, i uh i think it was driven just by being in a clothing store and looking and being like, ooh, neat. No, uh, no, but you, you suggested that you came into the store with this idea in mind, right? Mm -hmm. No, I no? came okay. into the store with the idea of getting a new fashion style. Okay, okay. And I just picked what was there. And to me, what that meant was cargo shorts and cargo and pants. by store, we mean the Jason Margaritaville Fendi. gift shop. Yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> and I was just like, hey, this will be cool. And that was my thing for like a couple of years was Hawaiian shirts and uh, cargo pants and shorts. Gary, I don't think it's a bad look. I want to be clear. I think it's a pretty bad look. I like a Hawaiian shirt now. Uh, I think cargo pants don't look good. Typically, cargo no, shorts, but they, have, they do have a, a lot of, you know, pocket space. That's true. They're very useful. You can carry around like four switches. <laughs> or three three pockets <laughs> the cat. Because uh, the so anyway. fourth pocket is for treats. Yeah, the fourth pocket is just for <laughs> tubes of meat yogurt for him to slurp. Crazy just, straws, the smell pocket. Any moment where anyone under the age of a hundred thinks, I'm gonna get a new look mm -hmm. is uh is bad. Yeah, it's not good. Anything that isn't buying a suit. Buying a suit is good. Like Yeah, generally men look alright in a suit. Typically. Typically. But like anytime Gosh. Gary, I don't know how to fucking solve this. Yeah. I don't know how to I, fucking solve this problem you presented me with. Yeah, it's not. It was just, uh, you know, my childhood. I thought it's a weird fucked up shit. I was also thinking in the same. The time, uh, the time machine is spinning up. That, and I got the, one chance to go back and fix this. And I got no fucking <laughs> clue what to do. Other than to just take a fucking gun and shoot you in the goddamn. Yeah. Room. Or my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> People yeah. they could do it. Oh, yeah, I see. Gary. Going. Gary, do I smell the long con? <laughs> how can i get my grandparents killed in 2006 no, grandparents were saints um the uh, uh 1996 okay in 2006 like yeah God, this is a long time ago um i also was thinking about driver's ed class uh which i hadn't thought about for a long time and how much emphasis like a bunch of motorcycles drove by the window uh -huh. i was hanging out with emma and uh, i was like oh it's a wolf pack and she rightfully rightly looked at me like i had just said something incredibly <laughs> fucking dumb because in driver's ed, we were taught that a group of uh, motorcycles traveling together was known as a wolf pack. And I said it like it was just a normal ass thing. And now of course, it? you know, it's a son of anarchies. Yeah. Now, now it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of San son of anarchists. Uh, yeah. So I had a, a real, like remembering when I was 16 and 17 moment. Yeah. So day. you're single now. 
<laughs> Sorry, ladies. Uh, Sorry, boy. ladies. Gary's single. Gary's single, and he threw out those Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he didn't yeah. replace them. Bare he torso re- 2020. Yeah, bare torso. I couldn't put anything on my torso I wanted to. It'd slide right off. Yeah, uh, no no arm hair to give it purchase. <laughs> I need that velcro uh arm hair going on. Uh, Will. Gary. For $3 million. Sure. No no strings attached. I love your that. Nutritional, your nutritional needs are all met. Okay. But to get this money, you're only allowed to eat a single dish for the rest of your life. No variation. Always the same meal. And it has to fit on a conventional dinner plate. What would you choose? Uh, is this being enforced by magic or do I just lose the money if I break the thing? I'm going to say magic. I'm going to say okay. once you commit, you've committed. Okay. Uh, and I, I, you know, as usual, when other people talk, I blank, uh, periodically for some of the words, uh, am I allowed to like, as how usual. specific, <laughs> how specific do I have to get on the food? Uh, it's very specific. So you can't say like chicken wings, but I get a different sauce every time. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and and I, I know they said my nu- nutritional needs were met. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about what about food consequences? Oh, that's a good question. So like diarrheas. Gary, you have gotten right to the heart of the issues I was worried about. <laughs> Cupid's arrow. I, I, I tried to yeah. I tried to I tried to speak around it. Uh, yeah. You know there could be all sorts of different issues. Uh, but no, sure. Gary, I was thinking about diarrhea. I suppose consummation is the other one. Uh, I'm going to say that that is a factor. Shh, God damn it, Gary. Why you got to do this to me? Because I, I was going <laughs> to eat mozzarella sticks for the entire fucking rest of my life. And it's going to be pretty nice. <laughs> pretty horrible. Pretty scary. Uh, yeah. Uh, Arby's, uh, Arby's double roast beef with horsey sauce and uh, Arby sauce. Interesting. I like Arby's. Yeah. No, that's uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, oh, wait. Uh, no, plutonium. Oh. plutonium. oh, plutonium. As long as it fits on that plate. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you're getting your nutritional needs, needs met. Uh, maybe you'll get powers or something. And, so, and I get a plate of plutonium every day that I can, uh, you know, <laughs> sell. You know, three, three million. Three, fuck three million, you know? Yeah, three billion. You know what's yeah. sexy? Eating plutonium. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Having a million dollars isn't cool. Yeah, Chewing you know, womb cool. is being cool. <laughs> Chewing womb full of plutonium. Eat that mutant pussy. That's what's cool. Will. Gary. Three out of 500, we've learned a lot today. <laughs> Gary, I have learned so much about you. And as usual, it was more than I wanted to know. <laughs> uh, if you like this show, hit us up on patreon.com slash TV. <laughs> I'm just imagining just this fat Illinois uh-huh. teenager. <laughs> Mm-hmm. just tr- strutting <laughs> with more confidence than I've ever shown as an adult into the junction eating place in DeKalb, Illinois, going towards my friend's regular table <laughs> and just doing a little ta-da. Yep. Just walking up and being like, Hey guys, notice anything new? <laughs> and, uh, and the thing that was new cargo shorts, orange Hawaiian shirt. It's it's tragic that Gabriel Iglesias was not famous when you were a teenager <laughs> so that your friends could roast you for looking like dressing like fucking Gabriel Iglesias. I, I think that uh, to my credit, my friends were mostly confused rather than uh, looking to roast me like they were just like, what? <laughs> and then I immediately tried to backpedal and shrink into a fucking corn cop. So, yeah. Uh, Rings reviews are also a thing. They sure are, Gary. They haven't stopped being a thing. And hey, I got a short one, which is good because we're running like <laughs> the mm-hmm. the items do give us structure. Yeah, every week will be longer and longer as we uh, move months and months out from episode five hundred. Uh, so uh, you could leave us a rating review like this one, which is left on Podcast Addict by Kylo. It's like if Sartre set no exit in a podcast. Five stars. Thank you. Short, sweet, apt. That's very good. Uh, of course, every episode of Everything to Guppy ends with a seed. Will, do you have a seed for us? Uh, I sure <laughs> do, Gary. Oh, boy. I was, if I could improv a poem about an onion, now would be the time. But I can't. 
Uh, your seed is K Y L O O space R E N apostrophe S space P E N I S. Oh. Google that, and you'll uh, you'll get an item. <laughs> yep, you will get an item. <laughs> Good night. Good night.